Hi, it's Katrina. Number 10. The Terrible Shrew The Gargano Peninsula in Italy was home to a variety of strange, unusual, and particularly mean animals in prehistory. From about 33 to 5 million years ago, the island was riddled with gigantic animals that are now extinct. The island's inhabitants all seem to have suffered from insular gigantism. This is an exceptional phenomenon which occurs when animals become stuck on an isolated piece of land. It can also happen to animals that get stuck in a large lake. Because there is a lack of competition and predators in a smaller zone, it's easier for the residents to get bigger and meaner. For example, Dano Galeric's Messini, the terrible shrew. Researchers found the fossilized remains of Dana Galerix in Italy, on the island where it prospered for many millions of years. They described the fossil as gigantic and said the creature belonged to the subfamily of moon rats. Although it's been described as a terrible shrew, it was really a hairy, rat-like hedgehog relative and the oldest of its kind ever discovered. The terrible shrew could grow to about two feet long. This obviously wouldn't have made it as terrifying as facing off against a towering T-Rex. Still, stumbling upon six or seven giant hedgehog-shaped rats would be its own unique breed of fear. It looks like they filled an ecological void on the island when all the medium-sized predators vanished. Maybe there were prehistoric cats and dogs, but they disappeared once the island was cut off from the rest of Italy. This allowed these small, shrew-like animals to grow uninterrupted. Given the ridiculous reproductive rates of shrews, it probably didn't even take that long. They kept breeding, kept getting bigger, and probably had to resort to hunting their own smaller relatives. Without much food to eat, they had no choice but to be monstrous cannibals. Number 9. The Murder Bird Titanus was one of the biggest and scariest terror birds that ever lived. A frightening prehistoric bird unlike anything you could possibly imagine. It stood between 8 and 10 feet tall, weighed upwards of 300 pounds, and had a beak like a pickaxe. Titanus looked a lot more like its dinosaur relatives that went extinct 66 million years ago than any modern birds we have. It ran on two strong legs, had long talons, grasping claws, and a beak for ripping and tearing flesh. Even compared to the other dozens of species of terror birds that dominated the Earth after the dinosaurs, Titanus was truly something of a nightmare. It could easily outrun smaller animals, then bludgeon them to death with its beak like a solid steel baseball bat. This horrifying bird was so formidable, some paleontologists think it survived up until the end of the Pleistocene epoch 15,000 years ago, even as other birds around it were dropping dead. Titanus was a descendant of the most powerful meat-eaters in South America, showing up in the fossil record about 60 million years ago. It vanished off the face of the planet between 2 million and a few thousand years ago, and in the time between had spread from South America all the way into Texas and South Florida. Even though it was a bird, it couldn't fly. You might want to compare it to an emu or an ostrich, but it wasn't even in the same weight class. It would have easily hunted ostriches and eaten them for dinner with its much more brutal killing mechanisms. Each of its three toes was equipped with a sharp talon like a meat hook, and its beak was shaped like a battle axe. Its closest relatives were other terror birds like Forus rachus and Kellenkin. But where Titanus really stood apart was its heavy frame. It was just a stronger bird with a thicker body structure, a wide neck, and so much more power. Why it even had wings at all is a subject of great debate. It had tiny wings that weren't good for anything, and were still kind of like arms. It had a wrist and small digits that could flex just a little bit, and it was extremely similar to raptors, only way bigger and way scarier. And now for number eight, but first I want to give a big shout out to Joel Boyd. Thanks so much for watching and supporting Origins Explained. We wouldn't be here without you. If you are new here, be sure to subscribe and let us know what other videos you'd like to see in the comments below. Number 8. The Weird Reptile The Mesozoic Era began 252 million years ago and ended with the extinction of the dinosaurs. During that massive stretch of time, many different kinds of animals evolved, prospered, and vanished. 
There were a lot of marine reptiles swimming in the world's oceans, and one of the strangest of them all was a creature called Dolichorincops. Hope I said that right. This weird marine reptile's fossils were discovered in Kansas in 1900. It was quickly identified as a plesiosaur, but with a short neck and stout frame. You might be familiar with plesiosaurs since they dominated the world's oceans for nearly 200 million years straight. They evolved into all types of different subspecies. Some had long necks, some had short necks, some were gigantic, and some were as small as dolphins. Dolichorincops was only about 10 feet long, but it was unique in that it had a jaw like an extremely long pair of needle nose pliers. Its jaws were designed specifically for catching fish. Just imagine the long mouth of a crocodile, only narrower and filled with curved teeth. It snatched fish out of the water, then slid them down its mouth and swallowed them whole. Size was everything during the Mesozoic. Even an apex predator like the plesiosaur found itself inside the belly of other creatures. Researchers discovered the fossilized remains of a juvenile Dolichornicops inside the belly of a Tylosaurus fossil. Tylosaurus was another savage marine reptile, only it grew to over 45 feet in length and was a type of mosasaur, a prehistoric relative of modern-day monitor lizards. The big point to take away here is that if you lived in the prehistoric ocean, there was always a bigger fish. Number 7. The Bear Dog Amphicyon, better known as the Bear Dog, was one of the most frightening abominations that ever crawled out from the prehistoric jungle. It shared features of both modern bears and modern dogs, yet they weren't part of either family. They weren't bears, they weren't dogs, but were some scary mashup of both classified as Caniformia. Oddly enough, this is the same modern suborder of animal that includes wolves, sea lions, and weasels. Based on the large number of fossils discovered, we know there were a few different types of bear dogs living between 58 and 23 million years ago. The first kind had long limbs, was a good runner, and looked a lot like a modern wolf. But again, it had bear features, like flat feet and extremely heavy bodies. The second kind was stocky, strong, and thick like a black bear. Some were so small that you could put them in a doggy backpack, while others grew to the size of grizzlies and were 1,000 pounds. According to Chicago's Field Museum, bear dogs likely started from a single species that was only the size of a chihuahua. Then, as they continued to evolve, they continued to grow and change. As they got bigger, they got scarier. But size has its disadvantages as well. As the bear dogs grew more powerful, they also needed more food to fuel their hulky bodies. This required more hunting and slower reproduction. Still, they were at the very top of the food chain. If you were to meet one of these monstrosities in the forest today, you would wish you'd stepped upon a cougar's lair instead. The first bear dogs evolved in Eurasia, at a time when the Earth was much warmer than it is now. The average temperature around the entire globe was 86 degrees Fahrenheit. With all that heat and moisture, the world was covered in thick vegetation, and everything was big and hungry. It was only when the world started to cool down, about 10 million years ago, that the bear dogs found themselves running out of food to eat. They were too big. The sudden shift to a colder climate resulted in a serious loss of potential prey. This was why other animals took center stage, smaller creatures like wolves and black bears that could survive on less. If this prehistoric bear dog was still around today, would you be scared or would you want it as a pet? Let me know in the comments. Number 6. The Super Croc In Brazil, Colombia, Venezuela, and other parts of the Amazon, Scientists have found the bones of a creature so scary, it's hard to imagine such a thing existed. It was a semi-aquatic killing machine with a bite strength of about 7 tons. I'm talking about the Purosaurus, potentially the biggest crocodile that ever lived. It was discovered in 1892 by Joao Barbosa Rodriguez. Over a century later, scientists are still trying to figure out just how deadly this thing was. Based on all the fossil evidence we have, Purusaurus was somewhere around 40 feet in length. Just try to picture a crocodile the full size of a school bus weighing 8.4 tons and hungry. 
It was so big that it could chew up and swallow several of the biggest crocodiles we have today at the same time, like a handful of popcorn. Even though we know its size, there are still a lot of important details about the animal's biology we don't know. Scientists can't figure out exactly how Purusaurus used its immense weight and powerful jaws to kill, or how it digested its food. It was only recently that a team of scientists from Rio de Janeiro's Federal University started to study the colossal monster. They first confirmed that its head was about the same size as a modern caiman living in the Amazon. They also crunched some numbers and figured out Purusaurus needed around 88 pounds of food every day just to keep itself going. For comparison, that's nearly 20 times more food than the modern American alligator needs to survive. It also delivered seven tons of sustained pressure when it snapped its jaws shut. That's a significantly stronger bite force than any Tyrannosaurus we know about. One of the research members, Aline M. Gillardi, explained both T. rex and Purusaurus were apex predators at the very top of the food chain. They had absolutely no competition from other carnivores. It's not clear why Purusaurus went extinct. Most of its fossils are from 8 million years ago. It seems to have evolved quickly, exploded on the scene in South America, and then vanished just as fast. Its stupendous size was probably the cause of its decline after it ate all the available food. Number 5. The Giant Hyena Early hominids were most likely hunted by giant hyenas across the plains of Africa. The first of our great ancestors emerged in Ethiopia about 3.8 million years ago, around the same time the giant hyena was active. Homo sapiens only started to develop around 300,000 years ago, shortly after the giant hyenas went extinct. The data suggests that for nearly 3 million years, ridiculously huge hyenas prowled the same plains as our ancient ancestors. It's extremely likely that the weak, hairy hominids found themselves hunted by the giant predators. The giant hyena goes by the scientific name Pachycrocuta. It was a mega mammal that looked extremely similar to our modern spotted hyenas, only three times bigger. Each giant hyena could weigh up to 400 pounds, and they were ferocious. They had shorter legs than modern hyenas, were more muscled, and closer to the ground for better stability. Yet despite being huge and menacing, giant hyenas were still scavengers. Scientists believe they ate a stable diet of stolen prey that they took from smaller, less savvy predators. They may have occasionally hunted for their own food in large groups, maybe even tracking down a tribe of loincloth-wearing hominids. But more likely, they scavenged like massive land vultures. Fossils of Pachycrocuta have even been discovered in the same Chinese caves where archaeologists found the remains of Homo erectus. Homo erectus was our ancient ancestor, a species of human that evolved about 2 million years ago and had very similar traits to modern people. They didn't look quite as much like apes as the evolutionary variants that came before them. They had defined brows, human lips, and were very close to being Homo sapiens. Some scientists even believe they were the first upright walking humans. Finding the bones of a Homo erectus in a cave alongside giant hyena remains pretty much confirms that giant hyenas hunted and ate humans. Luckily for us, they went extinct around the end of the Ice Age, replaced by the smaller, faster, and well-adapted spotted hyenas. Number 4. Rabbit Rex Bunny rabbits are not particularly scary. Nobody's ever seen a rabbit eating a carrot and ran away in fear. But if you met Neurolagus 5 million years ago, you would flee in uncontrollable terror. Neurolagus rex is an extinct species of giant rabbit and the biggest scientists have ever discovered. It was about 10 times larger than any living rabbit, yet it was essentially the same animal. It was just really, really big. Neurolagus rex existed during the Pliocene epoch between 5 and 3 million years ago. It's the biggest member of the Lagomorpha family of animals, which includes all species of hare, rabbit, and pika. It stood at a height of nearly 2 feet and weighed 26 pounds. It wasn't big enough to bite your head off, but it was certainly more startling in its appearance than the European rabbit. 
It looked a little different than the bunnies you see at the pet store. Its skull was small, it had poor eyesight and bad ears, a short spine, and it couldn't hop. Fossils have shown that its forefoot slapped the ground when it walked, not just the tip of its toes. It couldn't possibly have hopped. On paper, it doesn't sound like a very successful animal. Neurologus was essentially blind, deaf, and hobbled around from one patch of grass to the next. But still, it was big. It may have gotten so big and evolved such awful survival features because it lived a solemn existence on a small island in the Mediterranean. It was likely a smaller rabbit that arrived on the island first, then because of its loneliness grew to megalithic proportions. There were no predators on the island, so it really didn't need to hear or see, apparently. Neurolagus just kept getting fatter and fatter and developed creepy curved fingers so that it could dig for roots easily. Scientists think it ate underground food and spent lots of its time scrounging in the dirt. By the time other animals showed up on the island with a taste for meat, Neurolagus didn't have the tools it needed to avoid being eaten to extinction. Would you have a Neurolagus as a pet? Let me know in the comments. Number 3. Cleveland's Armored Fish 360 million years ago, there were fish in the ocean far more terrifying than any dinosaur. One of these fishes was Dunkleosteus terrili, covered in a full suit of armor and ready for battle. Scientists have described it as a super predator, maybe even the very first apex predator that was a vertebrate. It lived during the Devonian period, known as the Age of Fishes. This was a time when much of the planet was covered in water, land animals had yet to make an appearance, and the world was dominated by alien-like freaks in the ocean. And don't forget the gigantic fish the size of submarines. Dunkleosteus could grow to an estimated 30 feet and was known for cruising the subtropical waters of Cleveland. That was back when North America was in a much different position, near the current latitude of Rio de Janeiro. The first Dunkleosteus fossils were found at Lake Erie in 1867. In the 150 years of research since, scientists have made a lot of educated guesses about the animal, including its length. However, some experts don't think the length is correct. Scientists from Case Western Reserve University recently published their findings on the prehistoric predator, saying its length may have been exaggerated. Russell Engelman, PhD student in biology, says Dunkleosteus probably wasn't 30 feet long. Instead, it probably had a torso like a tuna and was chunky, not long. It had more girth than length, leading the researchers to nickname it Chunky Dunk or Chunkleosteus instead of Dunkleosteus. But they were afraid the locals won't be happy about downgrading the size of the fish. Dunkleosteus is a big deal in Cleveland, basically the city's mascot. The fish even had its own Twitter account for a few years. Plus, most research done on the fish is based on specimens kept at the Museum of Natural History in Cleveland. The museum has the biggest collection of Dunkleosteus remains in the world. But public backlash doesn't make the science incorrect. Russell says the initial measurements were wrong. Russell says the armored fish was only 13 feet long, under half the original estimates. He based his findings on his measurements of the head, which he says correlates to the fish having a much more compact body. In the end, it really doesn't matter how big the fish was. It was still the original terror of the deep, the OG. 360 million years ago, Dunkleosteus was the biggest animal in existence. Number 2. The Forked Trilobite Trilobites used to get into fights. A new study suggests the ancient primordial sea creature, known as the trilobite, came equipped with huge horns that it used to combat its rivals. Not every kind of trilobite. After all, there were a lot of different species 250 million years ago. Trilobites were one of the most successful groups of animals to ever evolve. As a diverse group, they came in a lot of different shapes and sizes. A new study published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences suggests Wallacerops trifurcatus had a secret weapon. On the front of its head was a trident. The trilobite looked an awful lot like a creepy beetle, 
You could compare prehistoric trilobites to modern cockroaches, only a bit bigger and not so disgusting. When researchers found the bizarre head ornament on this species of trilobite, they didn't know what it was for. Scientists suggested the trident was for hunting, meaning the trilobite came with its own built-in weaponry. But further studies showed the trident wasn't flexible. It couldn't possibly have been used for skewering animals. Now, scientists think the trident was used to flip over its competition. It may have used the three-pronged tool like a shovel or a pitchfork, to flip annoying male trilobites on their backs when they try to invade claimed territory. Number 1. The Monster Penguin 60 million years ago on the shores of New Zealand, there was a bird about the size of an adult gorilla. Alan Tennyson from the Museum of New Zealand, Te Papa Tonga Rewa, came across the bones of the mysterious seabird in 2017. They were at the beach preserved in a concretion of sediment, bits of stone stuck in a cannonball-shaped rock. The rock had cracked open to reveal the tiny splinters of fossil, which Alan took back to his lab and analyzed. He and his colleagues quickly realized they were dealing with penguin bones. But the bones were too big. A single humerus was nearly two feet long, twice the length of an emperor penguin's humerus. They went back to scavenge for more fossils, and soon found themselves putting together the skeletons of monstrous penguins. These things were huge, the size of bears. 3D models revealed truly scary water birds weighing an astounding 340 pounds and standing over 5 feet tall. The extinct penguin is named Kumimanu, and it was substantial. Researchers think the penguin was very closely related to flying birds. But once it lost its ability to take to the skies, it found itself stranded in New Zealand and feasting on everything it could find. Based on the earliest fossils, Kumimanu packed on pounds quickly, transforming itself into a behemoth. Do you think penguins would still be adorable today if they were the size of monsters? Let me know in the comments! And thanks for watching! Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already and give us a thumbs up for more! See you later! Bye!